So I'm here in North Carolina um, at the Cove, uh, the Billy Graham Training Center, a wonderful place. And this is one of the chapels right behind me. You can see it's a beautiful, beautiful building. Um, today I just got the news that our, um, well, a great man, uh, Charles Stanley, has just went home to be with the Lord. So not too long ago, uh, Dr. Billy Graham went home to be with the Lord which I, he was our evangelist and Dr. Charles Stanley was, you know, kind of the pastor. Billy Graham was an evangelist for the world and Dr. Charles Stanley was probably the pastor for the world. And so uh, my heart is sad today, but uh, boy, how many lives have been changed because of Dr. Graham and Dr. Charles Stanley. My message today would be, who now is going to pick up the torch, carry it on, and um, and do the work of the Lord. I know God is raising up someone, and uh, let's honor these men, these great men, Billy Graham, and today we find out of Dr. Charles Stanley. So we're praying for the family, we're praying for the church, and I'm praying for the person to pick up that torch and uh, be the evangelist and be the pastor that this world needs. So one of the things that I enjoyed most of Dr. Charles Stanley was his style of teaching. I mean, the way he would just grab his Bible and just through scripture, he would bring and deliver such a deep and anointing teaching straight from the word of God. Dr. Stanley was amazing. He was so powerful and he was so, he was so on point all the time, straight from God's word throughout his life. A couple of days ago, I, dro I drove by his church and I was thinking about him. And uh, today, you know, he he beat us all and gained his access to his eternal home. Heaven rejoices as another one of God's children enters those pearly gates. To all the Stanley family, we send our condolences, our prayers, and, um, and we know that a great legacy has been left behind. And us, children of God that are still here, will continue that legacy until Jesus calls us home. Rest in peace, Dr. Stanley. You Stan. can't live a godly life unless you have a prayer life. You're not, you can't. You live in a world, we all live in a world of temptation and trials and heartaches and burdens and sin. And everywhere you turn, there it is. You cannot live a godly life. I didn't say a life without any sin, but a godly life. And we defined what that meant. You can't live a godly life unless you have a good prayer life. Because the prayer life keeps you connected to Almighty God, sensitive to His will and His purpose and His plan for your life. You don't pray, you won't live a godly life. And if you'll think about it, it's the most important activity of your life. I've been a Christian 73 years. And I got started off praying because my mother taught me to pray and taught me how important it was and would remind me since my father died when I was nine months of age, which I've told you, uh, it was she and myself and uh, we didn't have much else but the two of us. She taught me to pray, to trust God, not to worry and fret, but just, just to trust him and watch him work in our life. So that's what I've been doing all of these years. And the second thing about her praying was that she wouldn't let me lie in the bed and pray. She had me to get out on my knees beside her and pray. The greatest lesson my mother probably ever taught me. And so when I think about how powerful that is in every single area of life, and I remember later on I was already finished college and I was in seminary the second year. Well, you've had the interview uh, from uh, Pastor and Dr. Charles Stanley with the son uh, that is Andy Stanley. We all know Charles passed away just a few hours ago. That was on Tuesday morning. He was uh, the faith leader and of course the television pastor 
and um, he has been the leader of the First Baptist Atlanta Church. He passed away at the age of 90. Stanley was very much well known to the congregants and around the world through his television and of course radio broadcasts carried out um, or that were actually carried out on various outlets far and wide. It's believed that uh, Dr. Charles reached close to over 150 countries. His words and his um, evangelical and holy words reached close to a billion people globally. It is also believed that his works reached close to 150 million homes. He was born on September 25th, um, 1932. Looking through his biography, it's believed uh, that he was uh, from Dreyfork, that is in Virginia. And he passed away, in fact, at the age of 90, like I've told you. Before joining um, the staff at First Baptist Church of Atlanta um, as an associate pastor, uh, that was in 1969, started staff as part of uh, the pastoral staff at Fruitland Baptist Church in Hendersonville, that is north of Carolina. Um, the First Baptist Church, uh, of course, he was the uh, main pastor there and he just retired just two years ago. In the interview, you've heard Andy asking him about the reasons why he decided to retire. Nevertheless, that he was still such a strong and very vibrant pastor. He said that it was really the right time to give up that role and actually give it to someone who was a little bit younger. So two years after becoming the senior pastor at First Baptist uh, uh, Church Atlanta in 1971, Stanley launched his television ministry with 30 minute chapel hour on two Atlanta stations. And in 1978, the Christian Broadcasting Network contacted Stanley about a nationally broadcasted program um, seeking a Bible teaching element for its fledging satellite network. They, they renamed it in touch with Dr. Charles Stanley that he actually grew overnight from its core local audience to a devoted nationwide base audience. So in this moment in time we are still sending our deepest condolences and also prayers to the family of Dr. Charles and the grandkids and also the people around the world who really followed and believed in the words of Dr. Charles Stanley. Rest in power the king, Dr. Charles Stanley.